Alright, my... Real Bigfoot stories. Here's a Kentucky. My encounter happened July of 2011. Do not know the exact date. Me and my girlfriend at the time were coon hunting. We had a pretty high powered little dog named Dixie. A real strong, greedy little dog would challenge a bulldozer if you gave her a chance. We had hunted and made about two or three drops that night in the same place. She'd done alright. She'd done all right. Uh, the only problem was my uh, spotlight had ran out of battery. My big wheat light had run out of battery. So I was having to use a trail light. A little old keychain light. About yay by that. Itty bitty little thing. And it just had just enough beam to put out to where you could, well, you know, you wouldn't trip over your feet. As we're walking out, I get to notice my dog would take two or three steps, then look to the right, two or three steps, look to the right, two or three, look to the right. And this goes on for roughly four or five minutes, always looking in the same place. Now we're hunting on a patch of woods next to a horse pasture. It has about six head of horses in it. We cut down a little low hill and just itty bitty little low holler. We're going to go up to the flat and get back into the horse pasture. As we're going down, I look up and the horses are up on the flat and they're on a tight bunch. The whole herd's in a tight little bunch. Their ears are up. And they're looking. There my dog keeps looking. Now my dog keeps looking this way, so I stop and I tell my girlfriend, Hang on, babe. Let's look, look, look at Dixie. I, she looks down. And by now, Dixie's done turned completely sideways and is looking right at whatever she sees. She starts a slow growl. I look and I see movement. Well, I think I see movement. My first thought is, okay, we just done a wind of the coon, or we done flushed a deer, or something of that, something of that nature. So I stop and I'm watching her, and she's still looking. I'm trying to get eyes shine on my key light. I can't pick up any eyes shine and don't go out far enough. So I, my thumb's getting tired, so I slid off the light. And then I see movement again. It kind of moved just a little bit by like this, and I saw a silhouette. I'm thinking, my first thought is we done walked up on a black bear or something of that nature. It's curious, it's standing up, it's looking around. My girlfriend says, I'm going to run now, okay? <laughs> you don't run from a bear. So I got her by the back of the jacket. She was wearing a light jacket like a windbreaker that day. I'm like, hang on, don't, don't run, don't run. Now, I see it move again. This time it moves about 10 yards. It's a full moon. It's a full moon. There's a slough right behind where this is all going on. It's got about that much water in it. That's just shining perfectly. It's almost like a perfect backlight. Now I see it move. And you can see a pair of shoulders, a pair of arms, and a very distinct head. Now as it moves, it takes out two or three of these little trees at a time. I'm going to say roughly tops of eight and a half to nine foot tall, three and a half foot to four foot across the shoulders. Very broad, very, very broad. From about the waist down was fuzzy. You could see movement, but it was fuzzy because it wasn't the backlight was only from the top up. It would move about ten yards, stop, look, ten yards back, stop and look. Go up the hill a little bit, look, come back down and look. Then it got behind this decent sized tree you can see some of it on the other side, but you can see mainly the head poking around. Like here's the tree, you can see the head poking around looking at us. I look at Dixie, she's done. I'll reach down and I snap Dixie. She takes about five steps out and just locks. Snarling, growling, her hackles are raised up above her teeth, hair on her back standing up. I go, ooh. I look over and the horses are all now looking directly at whatever it is. They're all in a tighter bunch, a little bit closer to the fence now. Snorting, it's pawing. It steps out completely, and I, I see again, it's standing roughly like this. Shoulders are broad, but they're still slightly sloped. Head, you can see you know, light through an arm every now and then. And it's just like this. And I say, let's go on knees up toward them horses. If we get up in them horses, we might be all right. Now, I still got a death grip on my girlfriend's jacket. <laughs> now, I'm walking like this. Now, I'm calling the dog the entire time. She's about, she'll be about here now. I'm going, come on, Dixie. Come on, girl. Come on, Dixie. She's not moving. She's locked. 
Oh, it gets to the point. I'm walking backwards, and I got my girlfriend's jacket in this hand. I'm keeping an eye on it because as we're moving, it's moving. It's not parallel on us anymore, but it's moving with it. It's getting back behind us. Now, as it's moving, the horses are moving with it, and the dog is moving with it. The reason I keep watching my dog, she's still growling, locked up in the same place. We get up toward the fence after we go up this little bit of an incline. I look, and the horses are now looking directly at us. The dog is now looking directly away from us. I mean, it's done circled back, back to behind us. Right. It's on the trail we was on. Right. Girlfriend gets over the fence. I get over the fence. The whole time I'm still calling the dog. She's not moving. We get up to this, this bunch of horses, and I look back toward the gap we just came out in. It was a full moon, as I said. Full, you know, full foliage on all the trees. Once you got outside, it was like a silhouette. You could see the trees in front of you, but you could not see the trees inside. It was black, pitch black. I couldn't even see my dog because he's a walk around with a lot of white on it. We're trying to get out, get out to the back of these horses. They're all still in a tight bunch looking. I said, let's go over to this main little trail here and we'll walk back to the car. Because by now, the dog had done gone silent. And I'm thinking she's done bolted left or bolted right, so he was meet us back at the car, meet us over at the house. I live not far from here. We get roughly halfway across the field. Horses have moved a little bit now. They've just kind of shifted over one direction. They're not turning. None of them are turning, mind you. They're moving. And they're locked up on this gap in the trees, this bigger gap in the trees. I turn around. I continue walking straight. I hear her running behind me. Not by Peter running, but running. I turn around, and my dog runs flat into me. It take, almost takes my legs out from under me. Wow. I stop, and I look at her. Her eyes have done got that milk-white coat over them. They're rolled back in her head, and she's shaking. And she's just, this fear drool. This, it looks like a water faucet that turned on in this dog's mouth. This pouring all over. I reach down, I grab her, and I snap her real quick. She's about to go somewhere else. She ran into us purely on accident. She didn't know us from Adam. While well, I have her clip, she's pulling that way, trying to go. I look up, and these horses have now backed up a little bit. Still looking forward, but have backed up a little bit. So I believe this creature had either come up to the fence line or slightly over the fence line into the field, looking at us still. The whole time this has happened, I do not hear footsteps. The whole time it's happening to us in the woods, I do not hear footsteps. Now once these horses have come forward a bit, and we're in the field with a dog, I begin to hear footsteps. It's one, two, one, two, one, two. It's not one, two, three, four as an animal running through the woods. It's one, two, one, two, one, two. Then it picks up. It's one, two, one, two, one, two. It picks up speed to it's a full run. I know the ground back here very well. I grew up back here. I've been in the woods when I've been indoors. I can tell from the sound, it went down the trail, capped the hill, ran through the slough, it's called Shepherd Slough, hit the creek. Once it hit the creek, it goes about 15 steps in the water. The creek forks off. So I do not know if it ran back to the bigger slough or ran up into the hills and hollers. The girl that was with me at the time is now my wife. The dog, I never could get her to hunt again. She was ruined from that day on. Now, as we're walking back, we'll get back to the car, rather, she would never would load up in a dog box. You'd have to physically pick this dog up and set her in the box and close the door. My girlfriend, who's now my wife, opens up the door, and the door of the little dog box, she goes flat to the back of it and just gets this little ball in the corner and just hunkers and is still just shaking. It took two days for this dog to quit shaking entirely. So you look outside and you wow. see her just still shaking. Wow. Like I said, I'm, we worked with this dog for another two years. This happened back in 2011. We never could get anything else out of her. She, she, she never would hunt again. I wound up giving her away here recently. That's so ruined a good coon dog. Ruined a good, ruined a good coon dog. She was just gritty, had uh, natural talent. And after after that, we never could get her get her back. Right. She was too far gone. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem.